Most people sit in their offices nine to five, dreaming of spending their holidays in a tropical island paradise. And have a look at this place. Palm trees, white sand, crystal clear waters, as if this isn't paradise. But if you can't sit still for more than two seconds, like Dino and I, you'll just want more out of your holidays. So we're here to show you what else these islands have to offer. Ready, Pete? Let's go, mate. Woohoo! Have a look at this. <laughs> Ask 100 people what their idea of paradise is and you'd get 100 different answers. And Samoa ticks all of those boxes. From the deepest blues to the greenest greens, this group of islands are filled with colour and life. You know that beautiful tropical island shot, the one that's on your screensaver? Well, that was probably taken right here. Samoa's made up of a few tiny islands scattered across the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It's about halfway between Hawaii and New Zealand. The capital up here is on the main island Apollo. And to give you an idea of size, most places are usually no more than an hour's drive away. From the air, the first thing I noticed was just how steep rugged and green the mountains actually are. It seriously looks like a cross between Dr. Evil's lair and something from Jurassic Park. Especially because most of the islands are completely covered in thick jungle. Unlike many capitals around the world, Apia has managed to retain the charm of its Pacific Island roots, while still staying up to speed with the modern world. It's the perfect blend of new and old, and your options for getting out of a pier and into some other parts of the island are much the same. It's a classic. This really just, this is Samoa right here, isn't it? Although judging by this dugout canoe, I think I'm going to be sticking with the newer options. <laughs> it's got a shoe stuck in it. <laughs> what do you reckon, mate? How far would you get? I don't know, by the looks of this, maybe three Ks. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Samoa's not a big place, but there's still plenty of things to see and do. And the other thing that I love about this island is you don't have to go very far to get your culture fix. So here's a few things that I thought might be a lot of fun. The first thing one of my mates told me when I said I was going to Samoa was, Pete, if you see everyone in their Sunday best, they're heading to church, and so should you. It's a really unique experience. But the real religion here is sport. Get yourself to a local rugby game. It's a lot of fun and a great way to mingle with the locals. But watching all this sport is kind of making me hungry. Hey, Chris. Hey, Pete. How are you Chicken. going? Did you enjoy the game? I love the game. <laughs> I love the game. This is my mate Chris, and he's treating me to a hearty Samoan feast. So, what are we doing? What are uh, you making? Domo. Domo is our traditional cooking using hot rocks, sir. Okay. So what I'm doing is... It's the traditional way of cooking in Samoa. And I hear the end result is delicious. So how long has this type of cooking been a tradition? We're talking about thousands of years. I mean, you know, and still to this day, it's still intact and alive. It's our way of cooking. So now we're getting ready to put everything into the, bake everything. Uh, the only thing I got left is uh, wrapping up the fish. I okay. have here two parrot fish. Two parrot fish. Did you catch these? Uh, yeah, at the fish market. <laughs> at the fish market. In theory, it's pretty simple. Make a fire. Oh, yeah, she's got some heat. Throw some rocks on top to heat up. Then steam food wrapped in leaves on the rocks. There is absolutely nothing that goes to waste here in Samoa, that is for sure. Look at that. 
Well, even used for this stuff, I would have just thought this was compost or something. <laughs> 40 minutes, it'll be ready. Oh. Be ready. Whilst we wait for the umu to finish cooking, Chris tells me about the Samoan way of life. I'm not a chief, uh, I'm a server. Because we live by the saying, the way to authority is through service, like uh, providing, contributing, protecting, and caring for your family as you grow up. Uh, so uh, while that service is being performed, your eldest and your chiefs are monitoring your service. So for example, this is one thing unique about the Samoan culture. Man and woman has the same exact possibility to be a chief. Oh, really? Gender is not an issue. It's about your actions. Right? Okay. So if I'm server for a day, mm. do I? Oh, yes. I think you deserve you earned it. <laughs> Even though you only put two rocks on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was watching. Yeah. I've been dying to learn more about the traditional tattoos here. Or, more to the point, are they really that painful to get done? The so, word pain is not even enough. It's really? pure torture. It's pure hell. But the Samoans uh, say that this is one thing you cannot take away from us because it's the core of our culture. And what does this stand for? Is this something that, that as a serviceman, you wanted to have? It's more like an initiation from boyhood to manhood. You know, like not manhood meaning macho or show off, no. Manhood meaning that you're matured enough in your mind to serve and protect your family. Yeah. Do these tell a story? What, what's, what's this over here? It's spear heads. You know, like, if you have a, a spear on your hand, the only reason why you have it is either protect yourself or fight against the enemy. So what we carve on our skins is more like, you know, metaphor like protection. Yeah. We carry the spirits of our ancestors with us, no matter where you go. How do you think the Umu's going? We think it's ready. After about 40 minutes, our umu appears to be ready. Oh, yes. Yes, you ready for this? I am yeah. ready for this. And it smells amazing. Yeah, the heat coming off that. Oh, wow, Chris, this looks amazing. Oh, look at that. <laughs> this is real island eating. Yeah. <laughs> oh. mm. No, oh, that is beautiful. This is a masterpiece. Here. Oh wow. No, oh, that is beautiful. That is really mm -hmm. nice. Eating a lot of this taro and that palusami as well. That's what makes us, you know, the physique. That's what makes us good rugby players. Oh. You did beat us once, didn't you? Yep. And there's more to come. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> If history's your thing, then there are plenty of places that you'll want to check out. And even if it's not, I think you're going to want to see them anyway. On the two main islands in Samoa, Savai'i definitely takes the cake for having the most laid-back, traditional way of life, which is really saying something. And if you're willing to travel, Falia Lupo, on the most western point of the island, is a must-see. Here you'll find a secluded white sand beach and one of the oldest archaeological sites in Samoa, Star Mountain. It may not look like much to you or me, but Samoans have been travelling to this meeting place for thousands of years. And the lava fields in Savai'i are definitely worth a visit. Stepping out of the jungle and into the Marscape is surreal. The lava ran straight through the ruins of an old village. The only buildings left are the two churches, and you can see where the lava actually flowed in straight through the front door. Well, I'm sure you've heard of or read the book Treasure Island, and it was written by this guy, Robert Louis Stevenson. And we're in his house right now, and I'm here with Nitro, who's going to show me around. Nitro, how are you going? Good, how are you? Very good. Robert Louis Stevenson grew up in the UK, and by the time he was 35, had already written several of his most famous books, including The Strange Case of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde and Treasure Island. After travelling through the Pacific Islands, he came to Samoa, fell in love with it and built this amazing house. This was his library, his bedroom as well. 
Yeah, he sleeps with his books. Yeah. And actually, we have the first edition here. Famous books he wrote. Kidnapped, Treasure Island, and Dr. Jacob and Mr. Hyde. Wow. And these are the first copies? First copies. All written before he came to Sam. What? So what did he write here? We have some copies. So these are the books he wrote in the Pacific. 44 years old when he died, but he wrote a lot. So Very how, busy. Man. How many books in total? He wrote 13 in the Pacific. Yep. And 21 before he came to this to the Pacific. So he was busy. Very busy. <laughs> he may have been a true Samoan by the time he died, but he always kept a little bit of his Scottish heritage close to home. See the fireplace in the corner there? Yep. Only this house in Samoa, you see a fireplace in it. Yeah. As you know, we don't need it. Never get cold here. <laughs> and my one real big question, <laughs> what about this guy right here? Where's he from? The lion skin was sent it from his friend in South Africa. Right. Yeah, we don't have lions. <laughs> Dino and I have decided to get out of town for a couple of days and check out the south coast of Apalu. The only problem is we can't quite figure out which bus goes where. See what happens, boys. Well, this is a pretty colour. This will do. Salofa. Salofa. The public buses in Samoa are brightly coloured, have custom timber interiors, and catching one is an experience not to be missed. If only they had buses like this at home. It's a lot, isn't it? It's beautiful. There are no windows, very little suspension, and the timetable seems to be at the discretion of the driver. This is travelling in wood, man. We're sitting on wood, <laughs> wooden floor, wooden ceiling. No windows, no worries, music turned up. Happy That's days. That's it. That's it, eh? <laughs> Definitely on island time now. And if you like Samoan pop music, well, you're in for a treat, because it's often blasting from the speakers at full Volume. They say, oh, yeah, come on, crank it on. The only reggae is loud reggae. We can just stay on this bus all day. Well, <laughs> I think we're going to. We don't know. We have no idea where we're going for a start. Yeah, where are we going? I don't know, but with this natural ventilation, <laughs> we've got a natural air conditioning. I don't really mind, actually. Yeah. Luckily, it is the right bus, and we've been dropped off near Lalumalu Beach on the south coast. This is one of the most beautiful beaches, and I think I've also found the perfect accommodation. But between you and me, I'm just itching to see what the surf's like. And this is a mecca if you surf, and in fact, if you just love beach paradise, this is also a mecca. And there's unobstructed views of all these breaks down the reef, so as soon as it gets good, I'm gonna be the first to know. But until then, well, it's not a bad spot to just chill out, enjoy the fresh air, and watch the sun go down. The coastline here at Samoa is absolutely stunning. But don't forget, there's heaps to do inland as well. How's it going, Pete? There you go, mate. Good. Let's go. OK. If you're not too afraid of heights, this is a must-see. Banyan trees are scattered throughout Samoa, and they're huge. And what better way to get a sense of scale than to climb up into the canopy? Once you're up there, you can use a hanging bridge to walk between the trees. Yep, it's as scary as it sounds, but awesome. Or if heights isn't your thing, I guarantee you'll enjoy going for a swim here. These waterfalls are on the south part of Apollo. It takes about half an hour to get here from up here. And once you jump into one of the swimming holes, you'll never want to leave. Check that out. That is awesome. The water is surprisingly warm, and there's a good chance you'll get the whole place to yourself. Where is everyone? <laughs> I know, we've got the whole place to ourselves. I reckon. It's the perfect spot to unwind, relax, and simply let the day slip by. If you find yourself on the island of Savai, then you can't go past the blowholes, about 20 minutes drive from the ferry terminal on the south coast. This natural spectacle showcases the raw power of the ocean 
in all its glory, with jets of water being sprayed hundreds of feet in the air. Blowholes were unbelievable. The locals chucked coconuts in for us and they did 50 metres in the air. There's no way you can look at this beautiful reef without experiencing what's going on beneath the waves. So I'm here with Neil, who's going to take me snorkeling for the day. Neil, where are we going to go? We're going to head about maybe 10 minutes in the boat right here, going down towards Anganoa Beach. It's also known as the Black Sand Beach. Yep. Really beautiful spot, crystal clear water, heaps of fish. Sounds good. Let's get on it. Let's go. Neil tells me this is some of the best snorkeling around. This is the spot. Yeah? Get on it. Yeah, man. Get on it. All right, let's have a look. You can snorkel off most beaches, but if you want to see Samoa in all its glory, you'll definitely want to take a boat out for the day. As a marine biologist, I've dived all over the world, and judging from this spot, Samoa's up there with the best of them. It's good to see that after a couple of cyclones and the tsunami in 2009, the reef is recovering nicely. A few hours can easily slip by as you explore the area and try to spot some of the thousand or so different fish species that live here. I could definitely get used to this. While Steno's off snorkeling, I just got a call from a mate, Chris, who's invited me back for a game of cricket with him and his mates. Well, it's the Samoan version of cricket anyway, and it's called Kirikiti. How are you going? All right. Talofa. Talofa. I'm ready to play cricket. Kirikiti. 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 Kirikiti? Yes. Yeah. When the English missionaries arrived, they brought cricket with them, and the Samoans have taken it on with gusto and made it their own. The thing is, Kirikiti is a lot like cricket, but there are so many rules, it's a bit tough to keep up. Yeah, actually, the actual rules, when you walk to the field, uh, yeah. the actual rules, you're supposed to have the bat on your shoulder. When you get close to the bat, you can jump. Uh, is this? Yeah. Yeah. And if you just right. walk straight on the bat, you're out. Uh. You only put the bat down if you look at the pitcher, he's got the ball on his hand. Yeah. If he doesn't have the ball in his hand, just keep your bet on your shoulder. There are so many huh. rules here. I need about yeah. three brains to remember all of this. Some people just, yeah, yeah, out before yeah. The so end. left shoulder and, and yeah, then, because, then maybe the right shoulder. When you hit, you... Chris reckons the best way to learn is to start playing. And I suspect they're not taking it easy on the new guy. Well, what is he saying? What is he saying? Hey, everyone, this is Pete. I want you to bowl real hard at this guy. No, actually, He's new to this game. Head. He's new to this country. No, actually, I tell him to aim for the head. Oh, <laughs> you did, didn't you? Oh. Hey. Oh. 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 Nothing. No, I was just... Are they in enough? You got that? I was just checking that out. I hit the Olu. The Olu, yeah? Yeah, I'll keep the bat off the Olu. I think these guys are pretty competitive, but they've seriously underestimated the amount of backyard cricket I played as a kid. After a few hits and a few misses, I think I'm starting to get the hang of it. Ooh. Oh, is that six and out? New day, another day of adventure. And here's a few things for the bucket list. I had a couple of options for today's adventure, and the sliding rocks, only a short drive from a pier, looked like a lot of fun. And their name well, really says it all. But to slide on rocks, well, you need water. And if there's no water, well, they're just rocks, really. The best time for these is between October and March. Or I could rustle up some mates, fill up an esky, and go fishing for the day. There are plenty of tour operators to choose from, and they know every detail of the bays, reefs, and secret fishing spots. But me, I just love to jump right in. Woohoo! Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. 
This is Tosua Ocean Trent. It's a beach sinkhole on the southern coastline that connects to the ocean via an underwater cave. There's a 30 metre drop from the walkway above, but luckily there's a ladder you can use to climb down. Looking up, you can see nothing but sheer rock, palm trees and blue skies above. It's basically a 26 degree swimming pool. You know what the best bit is? There's an awesome reef break just around the corner. <laughs> With reef breaks everywhere, it's hard not to find a good one. And my guides have just told me the one down the road is absolutely pumping. But first things first, and I've got to try to convince old mate Dino of the plan. I have had the best time here in summer. How cool is this place? I mean, <laughs> it's smashed it on so many fronts. You can go and chase an awesome adventure, or you can just relax under a, a coconut tree. Yeah. Friendly locals, the weather. It's How just been perfect all, it's, the, all the time. It's beautiful. This is like, it's like another planet. I just yeah. kind of feel like the rest of the world can just go and fade away somewhere. Speaking about the rest of the world, Pete, we have got a plane to catch in just a few hours. You're wearing that for, mate. Got I'm on island time. Forget that. We've got to get going, mate. Yeah, listen. Two more waves. What? No, yeah. we're going to go. <laughs> I'll just be five minutes, mate. Five minutes. Cheers, man. He is not going to be five minutes. <laughs>